welcome to today's social system mapping deep dive session for September 21st, 2020. Um, your hosts today are me, Christine Capra, co-founder of Sum App and Greater Than the Sum, and Kara Martner, who is um, my partner in crime and helping make everything happen. And she's doing our um, tech support. And um, so just uh, cut her a little slack if she runs into uh, some new things today that uh, take a moment or two. But, and if you have, if you have technical trouble, feel free to um, uh, direct message Karen. and she'll do her best to help you. Um, today's session is number two in our monthly sequence of three sessions um, that happen on Monday mornings in the United States, later in the day in other places. And um, so the first Monday session, the first um, session of the month happens on the second Monday. Uh, the second Monday is our on-ramp session, which is really an introductory level session where we usually have um, an experienced social system mapper sharing their social system map and telling us about their, um, their network. So it's a really good place to get introduced. If you're not familiar with the social system maps, um, uh, that is, I highly recommend you come to one of those sessions. And it's also great to see other people's maps, even if you are experienced. A lot of us really love seeing one another's, learning more about one another's work. Today is um, the second in the monthly. Like I said, it's the third Monday. It's a deep dive conversation. These are usually more focused conversations um, meant not as an introduction, but as digging deeper for people who are familiar with, an, with a uh, social system map. And today, we're going to have Jim Best, who's been a very um, active, um, actively participating in the Liberating Structures Network and learning Liberating Structures. And he's going to help us, uh, he's going to introduce us to what Liberating Structures are and help us use some of those structures to do sense making with a map, or at least talk about how, how we might approach that. The fourth Monday of the month, we do Tech Talk, which is usually about a, uh, a feature of some app or um, Kumu. And next week, Tech Talk is going to be about understanding inheritances in Kumu. So how do you use those and make sure that they don't totally mess you up in mapping? If you um, haven't been to any of our sessions, we have a whole library of past sessions that you could, um, uh, especially if you're not familiar with social system mapping, that I recommend you check out. Kara is probably putting um, a link to those uh, sessions in the chat right now. Um, also, if you are, uh, I think she does also put a link to other, to future sessions and to our knowledge base. If you're looking for more information, there's a whole wealth of information in our knowledge base. And then also, if you are stuck or confused or just need a bit of thought partnering, I uh, pop, pop on my Zoom every week on Thursday from 5 to 5.30 Central. Um, open, just open up a, a Zoom chat and whoever has a question or wants to come and talk to me can just jump in and we can have a conversation. So that's another opportunity for learning. So today's guest, um, Jim, I forgot to ask you if you want me to introduce you first or do the agenda first, but I left it the way it is. So you're gonna go through, review the agenda. So I'm gonna hand it over to Jim and, um, and he will take it away. Okay, thanks, Christine. Yep. Um, yeah, you can throw up the agenda slide. Welcome, everybody. Um, so thanks for this opportunity. Christine asked, how can we use liberating structures with sense making? And um, we'll give it a shot here today. Um, so liberating structures um, are really uh, just facilitation techniques and just want to be super clear about it as we look at this agenda. Sense making is its own art form, right? And so um, I'm going to put up an, my approach to sense making today since it varies depending on everything and we're all learning as we go. Um, so I'll put up like a straw man for how I'm looking at sense making, but we're going to look at liberating structures as facilitation techniques that allow us to uh, to bring some value to the sense-making process. Um, so we'll look at liberating structures. Um, we'll march through this approach where we look at purpose and then the perspectives that we bring to sense-making. And then we'll use the human systems dynamic format of uh, looking at 
the social system map that we're going to look at today, the community of practice map, from a, just an observational perspective. What? And then the sense-making part is, so what? What does that mean? And there's a third part, which is, so now what? In terms of moving to your action, which I've got grayed out there, um, since we're not going to really look at that. Uh, and then we'll have a little bit of time for questions and thoughts. Um, so one other caveat is there's a bunch of slides here. So you, you know, there's a gray bar for most of you between the slides and the people. So you can move that back and forth to get a sense of the gallery. And I would suggest you stay in gallery view to see the other folks, but. And you're talking okay. about in your Zoom interface, there's that gray bar. Exactly. Okay. Can I jump in? Just yeah. Quickly? So I just wanna, so Please. I noticed that we have, um, Kalia just joined us. Want to just see if to do a quick sound check, Kalia, and, and just say hi if you feel like it. So, hi. Hi. Thanks. Welcome. And then someone else joined us, but looks like, do we still have that someone? Oh, John. Um, if you want to just do a quick sound check, that'd be great. Uh, hi. Hi. Welcome. Good. We're going to have interaction, so I just want to make sure we got our technical uh, stuff figured out up front. And then the last thing, Jim, um, you didn't mention, but for those of you who aren't used to these sessions, we often, uh, we usually, the f formal session ends at the top of the hour, and then I will stick around, and I think Jim will stick around today um, for an extra half hour, so we have um, plenty of uh, time for if you have more questions or just want to change, whatever you want to talk about, we'll still be here for an extra half hour. So. Just want to put, uh, point that out as well. And I'm just done intervening. Jim, go ahead. Thank you for that intervention. Um, so we're going to jump in with a liberating structure right away so you get a sense of it. Um, you can go to the next slide, Christine. Oops. Um, this structure is called impromptu networking. And um, ultimately, in this path of sense making, um, starting with a clear purpose is usually helpful. Um, uh, so we're going to try to try to understand what your purpose is today in looking at the community of practice map. That's the that's our instructional space that we're working in here. So um, we're going to ask you um, and Kara, you could put these in the prompt if you would. These two uh, put in the chat. These two questions, but. What do you want to get from this community of practice? What do you expect that this community of practice can provide for you? This is a way of focusing our attention on the community of practice because we're going we'll to look at that map. And the other piece of it, the flip side, is what will you contribute? So it's just simply those two questions. And um, you're going to go into paired breakouts for a very short time, just um, two minutes each to answer those questions. Um, let's see, did you put it in the chat? Okay. You did. Okay, so that's your guidance there. Um, and uh, basically, um, in the chat with impromptu, net, I mean, in the breakouts with impromptu networking, you've got two minutes each way. And the, um, the invocation here is that um, you, you basically empathic listening to the other person as they stumble through their, their out loud thinking about um, these questions. Um, so be fully present and non-judgmental, no comment. Listen with full attention, be really present. Put yourself in their shoes. And don't rehearse what you're gonna say. Um, just let that flow and uh, be completely um, okay with failing in any way that you might fail verbally or that you might be brilliant. Um, so there's a timer in the upper right corner, self-regulate, make sure each person gets two minutes and we'll be back in four minutes. Welcome back, we're all back. So just quick hit, show of thumbs, was that engaging? Was it ambivalent? Was it bad experience? Bad experience from John. Okay, how about anybody else? What? Thumbs up, down. All right. John, give give us six. Give us fifteen seconds. Of why that was a bad experience? You're on mute. Um, well, it was just starting to get interesting when it got cut off. Okay, um, that's a good sign. <laughs> 
I didn't learn anything. Um, no semantic triplets were completed. I've got nothing to map here on my <laughs> structural mapping. Uh, I just don't understand All why right. these groups do this exercise. Thank you for tolerating that frustration. Um, uh, these structures can move very fast or they can move really slow and lots of people um, ask for more time, but we're gonna be ripping through this today. So hopefully it won't be so frustrating. If everybody else could come off of um, their, bring their video on, that would help a lot. And especially when you're in um, breakouts, um, much appreciated. Um, you don't have to, but it, increases the level of interaction. Um, so, Christine, if you could throw up the slide, kind of a definition of liberating structures. Most things around liberating structures are descriptions of their impact, but you could take a look at this definition. They're microstructures, um, easy to learn, um, foster lively participation, John's case shut down lively participation, possibly. Um, they're disruptive in that they disrupt the sort of the traditional forms that we have where we put the expert in the front of the room and they broadcast their great expertise to all of the people in the room who have huge amounts of experience and expertise and have a lot going on in their heads. Like right now, I'm talking, stuff is going on in your heads. And we as a community, we as this group are losing all of your experience right in this moment because only one person is bogarting the audio space. Um, so that's what the, that's what liberating structures are intending to disrupt. Go to the next slide, Christine. Um, this is a definition uh, directly from Keith McCandless and Henri Lipmanowitz who created liberating structures and um, this is from 2009, but again, it's not so much of a definition, but it does come out of complexity research. Um, if you go to the next slide, basically there's the liberating structure format um, is, is been embodied in 33 different structures. Each structure has its own purpose. Um, it's an evolving set of tools and uh, these structures. And um, you can go to the website liberatingstructures.com and they're all laid out there and there's a Creative Commons free to use any of these structures and spread them widely. Um, interesting thing about it is that um, these structures, they're, they're basically facilitation techniques that have been stolen or repurposed and simplified down to the simplest form possible um, so that they can be implemented very quickly without a lot of training um, or anything else. You can sort of read from the book. It doesn't quite work that way, but roughly you can get your foot in the door um, with these structures. And, you know, they actually have cards where you can lay these cards out in strings so that you can create a storyboard for a particular event. And there's an application online that's free that's liberating, I think it's called Liberating Structures app or something. And you can basically get the instructions for each one of the liberating structures in your hand on your iPhone or whatever. Um, interesting thing is that the basic liberating structure is a one, two, four, all format. Um, and that, um, you can go to the next slide there for a second, or yeah, actually go to the next slide, Christine. Thanks. Um, basically you have some kind of a shared, sh shared challenge and each person takes one minute just to reflect on that challenge. So you are individually thinking about that for just a minute, and then you're put into pairs for just a couple of minutes, and you get to sort of share what's going on in your mind about that. You're generating ideas, you're building on those reflections, and then the pairs go into foursomes, and in the foursomes, you're starting to share amongst the four of you and develop the ideas. So you've gone from, uh, the individual reflection to putting it out there in a pair to starting to build on it generatively. And then you come back to the full group for five minutes and just pick out the stuff that was surprising. It's not a report back. It's um, uh, trying to capture some of the highlights that stood out. And 
while some people are pulling out those highlights, other people can be writing, at least in the virtual space, in the chat. So you have sort of a rich harvesting of what went on in this parallel processing that happened simultaneously in a very compressed time format. And it's super scalable. You could do this with 200 people and you would have all of that processing happening. Every voice gets heard and um, the trick is capturing that harvesting and bringing back to the group and having the group move forward with what came out of those that individual parallel processing. And that format of moving from the individual to the group um, very quickly on challenging questions and unleashing everybody's creativity and innovation and thinking um, underlies 27 of these 33 um, uh, structures. So um, that's basically it. If you move to the next slide, Christine, um, I was talking for, before about using these cards or whatever on paper to create a string and the output of each structure is then used um, uh, to build in the next structure. And so you can move a group together along a certain storyboard path to get to an outcome uh, using these 33 structures. So today we started with impromptu networking. We're gonna look at what, so what, now what, which I mentioned in the introduction. We're gonna look at nine whys, which is a way of drilling down to our deeper purpose. We'll use a chat blast to quickly uh, bring up information about uh, your impressions about the social system map. And then not a one, two, four all, because it's difficult to do on Zoom, but a one, three all for doing sense making uh, in the so what section of this uh, journey today. We'll also mention 2510 crowdsourcing, which we're not gonna do as a way of sorting through lots of people's ideas very quickly um, to get to actionable ideas to move ahead. And a 15% solution, which is, this is an overwhelming action, but what are the 15% of the things that I can do right now? And people can start moving, uh, taking action, which opens you up to the adjacent possible every time you take a, an action, state, uh, take a step forward. Every um, liberating structure has five design elements. Um, starts with an invitation. Um, you're distributing the participation, so it's not concentrated with an expert or anybody else with positional power. So I'm apologizing actually because of that's what's happening right now is this broadcast to you, but that's just the way it's going today, um, except when you're in the breakouts. Um, and uh, there's instruction about how you configure the groups and arranging the space was traditional because these were face-to-face -face meetings. In the virtual space, we do arrange the space by creating the breakout rooms, having the chat room, using Google Docs and so forth. That's the equivalent of that. And then finally, a set of instructions that uh, direct people to the allocation of time and how you're gonna use it. Next slide, spend much time on this, but these are the liberating structures principles. Basically, um, you know, the idea is to unleash everyone, get every voice out there. And part of doing that is by building a deep respect for people and locally what they know that no one else knows that you wanna harvest and pull out. Um, in the middle, you see there, learn by failing forward. We'll probably do more of that failing today. Um, and down at the bottom, um, never start without a clear purpose is sort of the launching point for today. So we wanted to just start with that impromptu networking to get a sense of why you have an affinity with this community of practice. But we need a clear purpose to figure out how we're gonna approach the sense making piece. So that pathway you know, there's nothing sacrosanct about this sense-making approach. This is just something I put together based on reading what we're learning together about sense-making in this community that Christine has convened. Um, so starting with a strong purpose, but then trying to understand what perspective you're bringing um, to the sense-making process um, is important. We'll talk a little bit about that in a second. Um, 
But with that filter, with that perspective in mind, and with a strong purpose in mind, then we go into that human systems dynamic process of what do you just looking at the map, looking at that at the whole social systems map. What what do you observe? What do others observe? And this can be applied to anything, debriefing an event or whatever. Um, there is a liberating structure called what, so what, now what, and um, it uh, basically does a one, two, four, all uh, in the what space, um, just comparing, uh, trying to understand the perspectives that everybody has um, that are different. What did you, we filter everything that we see. What have, what have you missed? What have other people seen? What's important to other people? And you start to build a collective picture of the differences of just what was observed there, not what it means. And then when you go to so what, that's sort of the classic sense-making piece. But the so what part is sort of the, the, the central piece of sense making is like, what does this mean? What patterns do you, what patterns do you see? What's emerging in your mind that makes meaning of what is, what's been observed? And we'll do a one, three all around that. And then from that, you would go to, so, so what? Na I mean, not so what, but now what? Um, what is it that you actually can do having recognized some of these patterns? Um, I've got down 2510 crowdsourcing there. That might be a place where you use that liberating structure to sort through ideas of the 40 people that are making sense of a particular map um, to figure out what you would do next to achieve your purpose um, if in fact you had a common purpose. Um, and then you act and the 15% solutions was like, how can you act if you can't do the whole thing? How can you get going? And then it's cyclic because now you're going to have changes in a map um, as a result of your action and you go back to, in the cycle of what? So now you're failing forward in a, or learning forward in a very quick iterative loop. Anyway, that's the approach that I wanna to bring today. We're gonna to dig a little bit deeper into purpose. So this liberating structure is called Nine Wise. And um, we're starting the invitation here. Remember every liberating structure starts with an invitation. Um, starting with what you, where you got in impromptu networking about what you need from this community. Um, why is that important to you? And the trick in this breakout, it's gonna be five minutes each, um, is you're basically answering that question, uh, why, is, why is this important to you? What do you need from this community? And your partner is helping you move to what the deeper purpose is there, just by asking why, um, not like a little kid, why, 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 but with empathy and presence, really trying to draw out why is that important to you? Why is that key? And you'll answer and then your partner gently tries to take you a little deeper and you find yourself moving closer and closer to uh, what your fundamental purpose is. And um, that's what you're going to bring to the sense-making exercise. So um, we're back with the same partners. Um, Carol put us in the groups and um, we've got five minutes. You'll get a broadcast that um, reminds you to switch. You can keep track of your time in the upper right corner. Okay, welcome back. Um, so we're running behind in time, but hopefully there was, uh, did you get a sense of, of getting to more fundamental purpose about why why looking at this map and trying to make sense of it, this community of practice um, that's uh, uh, depict is going to be depicted on the community of practice map. Why that purpose, um, did that purpose get clearer for you at all? Just up, down, no, down, okay. Any other, Any? did it get clearer for anybody else? Mariana, Hector. Hector's got a thumb up, I can see that. Yeah, okay. We got some sideways from Matthew. Okay, um, we are running behind here. So I'm just gonna add one other thing on the slide. If you would uh, share slides on some perspectives. Um, you've got 
hopefully you've, you've used a couple of these liberating structures to start to pay attention to your purpose about why you're you're coming to uh, the sense making engagement, why one does that. There's also various perspectives you can take. And, you know, you could look at this map. Um, you've got this in purpose in mind, you're coming to this map. You could start to try to make sense of it by pretending you're on the down dance floor, that you're down inside of it, looking out from your, uh, from an ego net perspective, from your node out to the other nodes. And what is my experience as I move through this community um, in terms of the purpose that I've just talked about? Or you can go up on the balcony and really look at the map as a, as a map and the patterns that are emerging from the map, from the, from the networks, from the human capital you're seeing there, from the, um, from the social capital that you're seeing. That's a different perspective. And that's a different way of coming at the sense-making uh, exercise. Um, you could come at it from the idea of this is about me. I want to understand how I fit into this network. Or you could come at it from a perspective of we. I want to understand how the people that I have affinities with, interests with, who are like me, who are from where I am or whatever, how we fit into this map and what are the positional structures and so forth. Or you could look at it from an us perspective of like, what is the community doing as a whole? Is it moving towards its purpose? Is it allowing people's purposes to generate? All those are different perspectives. And to be intentional about that is important. And you could use a liberating structure to sort through that using one, two, four alls. Um, you could be discussing it to see if the whole community has a common purpose or whether you sharpen your individual purpose and perspective. We've talked about this before, that another liberating structure really goes what, so what, now what. And there are three invitations there. We've talked about those. Um, and what you would do in the liberating structure there is use a one, two, four, all, or a one, three, all, something that moves from the individual to some generative thinking to the, the whole, uh, harvesting those thoughts to the whole. Um, and you'd apply it to each one of those phases, the what, and then you would you would go ahead and do that same one two four all or one three all or whatever uh, to the so what, and then again to the now what. So in 45 minutes you could move each one of those phases. Maybe takes 15 minutes, and you could quickly move a group of people, any number of people, uh, through that process. We're going to abbreviate it by if you can go to the next slide. Um, we're going to do. A, instead of a one, three, all to get at what the what the community practice map shows us, um, we're just going to go ahead and take a look at the map, and um, you can. It's just going to be a couple minutes. What are you observing? What does it stand out? What stands out for you in the map? And um, you can just fire that into the chat. So, uh, what we've got is the community practice map. Christine has an embedded link. So call up that link and Christine, can you put up the um, Hang on. that first view? Okay, took me a minute to turn it on, right, that's it. Um, okay, so here's that map. So Jim, yeah. are, you, are you recommending that people who have access to the link dig through it on their own and not watch us on the screen? Or are we doing? Yeah, we, yeah. Or, I'm, no? what i'm what i'm recommending right now is that everyone explore the map through this embedded link that christine put up and what you should see is a couple of different views here you might want to look at it so based on the perspective that you want to bring to this map um, based on what you wanted to get out of this community of practice that sets your lens for doing the sense making work um, so we use some liberating structures to get to that point. And now you're actually starting to do the first phase of the sense making piece, which is prior to the actual sense making and interpreting what it means is what are you seeing? Just what are you noticing? And there's three different views you can use to explore. There's the directory view. Oops, this is the, there's the directory view and the offers and asks view. Um, shows people's interests and uh, experience and need in this community. And then the last view is just the relational view. 
Um, and of course you can slice and dice that by either the filters in the upper left, by interest, by their investment in the network, or the strength of relationship in this case down at the bottom. So just play with that for a couple minutes and start putting in the chat um, things that you're noticing. And I'll do the same and we'll run this for, oh gosh, we don't have that much time, but we'll run it for a minute or two. Look at any one of those map pictures and have some observation about it, even if it's not deep or even if it's not connected to your purpose, but just put in the chat something that you notice there. <laughs> Narayan, so we've got some things coming up in the chat of uh, around how connected people are or not connected. Um, uh, how much experience there is. Um, who's connected? Who are the hubs in the map? These are coming up. Um, having common interests. Maya says, having common interests has built a lot of connections in a network. A um, lot of stuff around offers and asks. There's a huge amount of density around that. So you, you get the idea. We'll stop it there. But basically, there's an observational phase. And um, we're actually not going to have much time at all here to do uh, the sense making part, but what's, what we would do is um, you can go ahead and share um, the next slide, the one, three, all. And instead of moving into breakouts, let's just do this together. Um, so we will take one minute to think about this, but the invitation, this is the, the liberating structure. The, the, it's a one, two, four, all like structure, one, three, all. We're actually going to do it one, all, all. But the one part is, re, is the invitation. What patterns do you see emerging? What hypotheses do you have in your mind? And I'll just give you a minute to think about that and jot down any thoughts about that. You can jot them down in the, in the chat if you want. What we would do is we would be in small groups, in, in groups of three in this case, and having a chance for everybody to sort of talk about that, and then we'd bring it back to the group. But we're just going to talk about it here together. So you can come off, off of mute. Um, you could stop sharing that slide, um, Christine, so that we can see each other. And um, take a look at what's coming up in the chat. and. Um, if anything piques your interest or something else comes out of it, this point we're bouncing off of each other and building some kind of common concept about uh, what the map is showing us. Ariane said a temporal nature of the connection to the community is being shown. I'm not sure if it's being shown, but I'm picturing that that is something that is currently not being shown within the map, but shows up in a certain way on the map. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. And if we were time series mapping, we might be able to compare uh, something before and like at the start of these uh, conversations that Christine has convened and, and now, and hopefully we would have seen a movement and it would be a particular kind of movement and we would have questions about that. Um, pull out any of these things. Let's see, I feel like offers and asks needs to move out of static profiles into some kind of live and dynamic time bank structure. Oh. So what are you saying there, Matthew, that there's a, you can see the offers and asks, but it's very static and you would like to be seeing them uh, being uh, exchanged, that people are connecting around offers and asks. Yeah, just, just somehow that that needs to be right on the front page with the new ones at the top you know like a time bank a bit more you know not not it just sits there for a year or two years it's like a telephone directory it needs to you know i think that would be a way to to make right. kind of maps more there'd be a reason to kind of go back to see what the latest offers were or the you know i don't know just borrow what works on time banks and 
stick it like port it across to the front of the Kumu map somehow. And now you can see Matthew moving into now what, like taking like, here's a solution for that problem. And I immediately went there as well, which I was thinking like, boy, if we had active network weavers, somebody who was wanting to practice their network weaving capability, then they would be convening the offers and asks people around a particular thing and saying, hey, you guys have offered and asked, why don't we get together? I'll convene a meeting, you know, where we can actually do that exchange, you know. So now, you know, I'm just illustrating that we can quickly, we move up that ladder very quickly from observation to meaning making to action and belief. And there's a value in the liberating structure that keeps you structurally at the what part until you really surface just what you're seeing without interpretation and then move to the so what part where you're saying, what does that mean, what we saw? And then move to the now what part. You keep those liberating structures designed to keep those separate so that there's clarity. Um, I think we're out of time, but um, hopefully that gives a sense of uh, what's possible with the structures. And sorry, there was, might've been a feeling of bait and switch that we were gonna really talk about how liberating structures uh, is part of sense making or whatever. Liberating structures are just facilitation techniques that help unleash people's creativity um, uh, about the sense making path. And that is a whole nother topic. So, uh, thanks everyone. And we will be, um, I'm, this has been actually thought provoking for me. So, um, if there's a bait and switch, I apologize, but I found it really useful. <laughs> and, and, um, anyone who wants to stick around and, and dig further in or ask other kinds of questions, um, please do so after we say goodbye. But now, for now, let's all unmute and, um, give one another, uh, our greetings for the day are well wishes. So we'll all, all unmute who wants to do this and I'll count down and then we'll all say goodbye together. And then um, who, who, once everyone has popped off, then we'll continue the conversation with whoever sticks around. So everybody unmuted, ready to say goodbye or well, well wishes. Give you another second. Okay, so three, two, one. Thank, Thank you, you so for much, being everybody. here. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 B